We would like to thank this week's sponsors. We also understand that your money is hard earned. This is why we work so hard to grow this channel. If you pay attention, we continue to update things and make improvements. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. Please enjoy the episode. Before the air cool up, the solitude, the zigzag lightning, play the games in the universe. I know before there was a winner where or a dinner there. I know, I know before the foundation of the earth was laid. I feel discouraged. Why should the shadows fall? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home? Where Jesus is my portion. My constant is he. Why is I his own despair? And I know he watches me. His eye is on. And you've been good to us. 
You watched over us this day. You gave us health and strength to make it through this day. You gave us our being. You gave us another day's labor. And we thank you for it. Now we are in the house of the Lord. And we want you to know we're here because we feel that you can do some more things for us. And we want to praise you for what you have done and thank you for what you are doing and magnify you for what you're going to do. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I'm expecting something from you. And I'm going to praise you before we get here. I'm expecting a miracle in every house, in every heart, in every soul, on every job. I'm expecting a miracle, Jesus. And I know you can block the devil who will try to block the miracle and let the miracle get through. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Bless these children tonight. They're looking for it. Bless these children tonight. They're waiting for it. Bless these children tonight. Hallelujah. They're asking you for it. And I know you're going to give it to them. In your darling name, Jesus Christ, my Lord. These are other blessings I ask. In that beautiful name, Jesus, and all of God's children said, thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 3. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereupon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundations, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. My subject tonight, it depends on where you stand. It depends on where you stand. Everything depends on the position of the believer, whether he is to be blessed or cursed, whether he is to be the living or to remain bound, whether he is to be successful or a failure, whether he is to be used by God or used by himself, whatever. It depends on the position of the person. What is your position? You say, well, I'm saved. That's not enough. You need a position. You've got to have a position. You've got to position yourself. 
Positioning oneself means making some decisions about many things. Making some decisions about God. Making some decisions about the Word of God. Making some decisions about the ability, the strength, power of God. Making some decisions about where you're going, how you hope to get there. Making some decisions about where you stand and what is your position in your standing. There are a lot of people saved but have not made a position yet. Have not come to that point where they have declared themselves, have not given themselves a position that God can bless, God can honor, God can manifest himself through to or for that person. Israel never had the right position. Israel was saved. When she left Egypt, she was saved. Now, though they were a saved congregation, they had not positioned themselves in God or about God or as it relates to God. They were a wishy-washy congregation. One thing today and another tomorrow. Up today and down the next day. Fussing one day and cussing the next day. Praising God the next day. They didn't have no position. They were wishy-washy people never was able to bring themselves to a positive position. And anyone who have not arrived at a positive position, you don't know whether you're going to stay saved or not. You're saved, but you don't know whether you're going to stay saved or not. You might let a beautiful dame walk in here and turn your head around. You might let a handsome guy walk in here and make you stop speaking in tongues. Praise the Lord. You may let a few persecutions take your testimony away from you. You haven't positioned yourself yet. Praise the Lord. Whether or not you are going to affirm yourself on a true foundation. So God can establish you in himself. Uh, God can establish certain people in him. Uh, certain people uh, won't let him establish them because you can't establish yourself. Establishing, anchoring, uh, fixing the person in the, the foundation of righteousness. You do your part, and then God will do the rest. He can give you an anchor so deep in him that the devil can't pull you up. Uh, he, can, he, can, he can yank at you. He can push you and shell you. But he can't move you because of your position. You have already positioned yourself. And some people, the devil start messing with them. Uh, praise the Lord, they fast all day and like a cow who just gave a pail of milk and kicked you over. Praise the Lord, these are people who have not positioned themselves yet in the Lord. All right. In order to position yourself, you need to know what the foundation is. Praise the Lord. You can't position yourself on no foundation. You've got to know what the foundation is. And then you've got to build on 
that foundation. For there are many foundations, but on Christ Jesus there is one foundation. And Paul is saying other foundations can no man lay. He's talking about on Christ now. He's talking about uh, other things. We're talking about Christ, the foundation uh, of righteousness that must be laid uh, by you, your foundation. It must be on, on Christ. Now, finding your position is very important. Because without it, you just might not make it. You got to have a position. You can't be a person that's who's going to break down and cry just because the devil look at you. Praise the Lord. Uh, just because he stick his tongue out at you. You're going to just fall apart. You got to take a position that if the devil stick his tongue out at you, you're going to stick your tongue out at him. Tell him where to go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I know I was preaching one time and I told people to tell the devil to go to hell. Praise the Lord. And they said, my God, the bishop swam. <laughs> I say, you got to tell him to go somewhere. So tell him to go to hell. That's where he came from. Tell him to go to hell. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Get out of my sight. Get out of my way. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to let you stand in my face and, and, and prevent me from seeing Jesus the way I ought to see him. Trusting him the way I ought to trust him. Hallelujah. Believe on him the way I ought to believe on him. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, because the Bible tells you that when you lay your foundation, don't lay it on no sand and don't lay it on no dirt. Praise the Lord. Uh-uh. You find a rock. <laughs> find a stone to lay that foundation on. Praise the Lord. Behold, I lay in Zion a stone, tried stone, chief cornerstone. Lay your foundation on the stone. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because the day will come that your works got to be tried. Oh, praise his name. Hallelujah. Because if your works are not tried, it's a good sign. That you're so far from God to the devil say, don't bother him because he's secure in my camp. Don't bother her, she's secure in my camp. The people that the devil mess with are foundation folks. Praise the folks uh, that have anchored themselves. He give you a hard time. Praise the Lord, trying to uproot you. Trying to give you a bum stare away from the righteousness of God, away from the truth of God, away from God's divine order, God's divine will. Praise the Lord. you got preachers today in the pulpit who have never uh, been anchored yet, and yet they preach it. Praise the Lord. I've seen preachers, praise the Lord, as long as they didn't have nothing, they live holy. And soon as God blessed them, they backslid. They had a bad foundation laid. If you don't lay the right foundation, money can change your mind. Praise the Lord. If you lay the, if you lay the right foundation, I don't care how much money you get. You're going to still act like you ain't got nothing. Because you know where your blessing comes from. Praise the Lord. And some folks, the Lord can give them Fox and Minx and all that kind of stuff. And it won't turn their head. And you've got some folks, praise the Lord, they don't have to have a fox or a mink. Uh, they can have rabbit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> and their heads are turned. 
Praise the Lord, ain't got nothing but a rabbit. And anybody know rabbit hair come off. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> if you don't be with you hug somebody with a fox on. And 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 ain't no hair gonna come off on you. And you hug somebody who got a rabbit on. And you got all the hair on you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> I tell you, <laughs> you got to know where you stand. What kind of foundation are you on? Praise the Lord. That determines whether or not you can enjoy these blessings that we're asking God for. We're asking God for some big stuff right here. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I praise the Lord. We're asking God for some mighty things. And I know he's able to do it. There's no doubt in my mind about it. Hallelujah. But I want everybody to position yourself so God can give it to you. So that when he give it to you, you're going you're gonna to create a ruthless. You're going to just talk about it and praise him for it. And tell everybody else, look what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, uh, these foundations that people have laid that's not on Christ Jesus, they can't stand. And they are not going to stand. Nothing is going to stand that isn't on Jesus Christ. Nothing is going to stand. Because the day is going to come that every man's works are going to be tried. It's got to be tried. Every man has got to be tried. You say you're saved. Praise the Lord. Well, you've got to be tried. You've got to be tested. Your word is not enough. Your testimony is not enough. What came out of your mouth is not enough. Because you can sing today and backslide the next few days. You can give a testimony tonight and the testimony is not a true testimony. It's something that you gave of yourself that did not correspond with your lifestyle. Praise the Lord. If I shout, I'm shouting because I feel like shouting. It isn't because I'm living right. It's because I feel like shouting. So everybody you see shouting isn't necessarily living right. Praise the Lord. I see sinners shout. Praise the Lord. This kind of music we got today, anybody can shout. Praise the Lord. You don't have to have the Holy Ghost to get with some of this stuff. Praise the Lord. Just get with the beat. Praise the Lord. You can get your step in. So you can't use that as a sign that the person is living right. It's where you stand in God. For your foundation that you're standing on. Oh, bless his name. Thank you, Jesus. Paul said, Other foundations can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, the world of Christendom in the area of theological thought, which deals with the ministers, the bishops, and the high echelon of the church, they actually believe that a minister of God has just as much authority as Paul to do things, to say things, and to make plans, and to lay foundations just like Paul laid foundation. Because Paul was a preacher, Paul was an apostle. And there are many, one of the largest holiness organizations in America today, do not believe 
in Paul's teaching and will not live accordingly. They believe in the teachings of Jesus Christ. They do not believe in the teachings of Peter because Peter is the one who will first to say, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. They take what Jesus say and annul what Peter said. They say Jesus didn't say in the name. Jesus said in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So they annul what Peter said. They annul what Paul said and say we're going to stand on what Jesus said. Now, when you dissect the apostles from Jesus, then you don't have a New Testament. You can't have a New Testament without the apostles. Because nobody knew what Jesus said but the apostles. Hallelujah. I'm getting there. <laughs> Praise God. Nobody knew what Jesus said but those apostles. Nobody else knew what Jesus said but those apostles. Now if they didn't record it right, then the New Testament is a farce. They claim that Paul and Peter and that group who baptized in the name backslid. Praise the Lord. That's what they claim. So they will not accept the baptism in the name. The baptism must be in the title like Jesus said. But if they will look closely at what Jesus said, Jesus didn't say title. He said name, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Name, N-A-M-E. He didn't say title. Title is not there. Name is there. So when Peter baptized in the name, he was right. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But the point I'm trying to make is that many of us in the world of Christendom, in Pentecostalism, stands on part of the truth and not all of the truth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, if that's your position, that's your position. But the right position is take the New Testament totally from Matthew to Revelations and don't dissect any part of it. Because if Peter was wrong, the whole New Testament is wrong. Because the apostles are the ones who have told us about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They had to know what they were talking about. Had they made a single mistake when Jesus gave us the last message around 96 A.D., somewhere in that area, had the apostles made mistakes, Jesus would have corrected them in his last letter, in his last message, he would have corrected the apostles. But he did not correct the apostles. He let what the apostles say stand. And the apostles who came in the latter times, those are the ones he rejected. And so, that some of them call themselves apostles and are not. And I have found them to be liars. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Those apostles who wrote the New Testament church, he complimented them. But those who came late, he rejected them because they did not stand on the foundation laid by the apostles. Now, you can make your own decisions 
lay your own foundation and do your own thing. Praise the Lord. But remember this. You got to be tried. Your works got to be tried. Oh yeah. Jesus isn't going to let anybody come upstairs without being purified downstairs. Nobody. You hear what I say? You say you're going to heaven anyhow. Uh-uh, you're not going to heaven anyhow. You're going to heaven if you go according to the word of God. Praise the Lord. And if you don't plan to go according to the word of God, forget about it. You might well go have a ball, honey. Praise the Lord. Have a party and anything else you want to have. Praise the Lord because you, you are going to be there anyway. So why miss out on all the fun? Praise the Lord and go to hell at the same time. If I was going to hell, I'd have to have all the fun. I mean, I, I want it all. Because in hell, I'm going to burn. So before I burn, let me get something to burn for. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Give it all to me. Let, let me have all my fun. Praise the Lord. If I was going to hell, I, I would be the biggest Casanova on earth. Praise the Lord. I would be somebody else. Because I'm going to hell. And I get all my fun before I get there. But I declare to you, I ain't going to hell. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. I have given everything up in pleasure. I mean everything. Everything in pleasure. I don't need any of it. And don't want it. Praise the Lord. Don't want it. I don't need nothing but Jesus Christ. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Don't need nothing. Don't need nothing, baby. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ is the center of my life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, I'm getting more and more of him every day. I'm here. Ain't got no power. Have you got power over smoking and fornicating and adultery and all of this little fleshy stuff? Have got no power over that. And Jesus got all power in heaven and earth in his hand. And I'm down here struggling, backsliding the day, front slide tomorrow, backsliding the next day, front slide the next day. If you got all of this power, put it in me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Put it in me. Put it in my body. Put it in my flesh. Put it in my head. Put it in my feet. Put it in my soul. Put it in me, Lord. Walk in me. Talk in me. Live in me. Let me have it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You've got to position yourself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the Lord. You've got to position yourself. Because the Lord can bless you when you position yourself. Praise the Lord. When the boys in the fire furnace positioned themselves, that's when the flames couldn't burn them. Hallelujah. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, the God I say, <laughs> oh God, he's able. Hallelujah. God I say, well, you can't do nothing to me. You can't witch me. <laughs> you can't who do me. You can't fix me with nothing. Your rabbit foot won't work. Your green thing won't work. Your brown thing won't work. And I don't care how many other things you got. It won't work with me because of the God I serve. Praise the name of God. And some of y'all claim somebody to put something down for you. So what? Praise the Lord. The devil's supposed to put something down. That's his job going ahead, laying traps for you to fall in, digging ditches for you to fall in and break your neck. And it's God's job every time he digs a ditch to build a bridge across that ditch. So when I get there, I can keep on walking. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
Oh, bless his name. For some reason or other, we have not yet positioned ourselves. We don't know quite where we stand. But you got to stand somewhere. So position yourself. Get ready. Hallelujah. Paul said to Timothy, 2 Timothy, 2 chapter, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Oh, I like that. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. <laughs> I like that. Praise I say the Lord know who is his. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I say the Lord know who's saved right here. Oh, yes, he does. Praise the name of our God. The Lord knows who's saved in this house. And he knows who's faking in this house, too. He know who's sissing. Know who's fornicating. Know who is adultering. Praise the Lord. The closed door don't mean nothing. The fact that nobody saw you, I have seen you, don't mean nothing. The fact that nobody in church know your double lifestyle, that don't mean nothing. Praise the Lord, that don't mean nothing because we don't know about it. God know about it. God know exactly what you do. Praise the Lord, you ain't hide nothing from him. Can't hide nothing from him. Praise the Lord, your double lifestyle. Praise our Lord, praise the Lord, shout on Sunday and sissy on Monday. God know about that. You, you, you shout on Sunday and fight a kid on Monday. God know about that. God knows all things. Nothing is hid from the eyes of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So watch out for the foundation, my child. On which you are not standing. Because God is monitoring your activities. Praise the Lord, because every man's works shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. Oh, praise his adorable name. And I'm thanking God for his mighty power. And because he wants his children to position themselves. The Lord want to prove through you that he's able. The Lord wants somebody to take a position. He wants somebody to tell the devil you're a liar. He wants somebody to say to your friends, I can't run with you no more. Praise the Lord, you pulling me down. I can't stay saved holding your hand. I can't stay saved in your arms, necking and hugging and kissing because you're causing me to sin in my flesh. He wants somebody to position themselves and say to the evils that are around you, I can't partake of you. Praise the Lord because I got a date with destiny. Mm -hmm. I got a plan that's going to take me to higher places in God. I got a plan to go to the height of the clouds because he has given me a seat in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. He said, I raised you up together and I made you to sit together. I've given you a seat in the bleachers. And if you just stay on the right foundation, I'm going to take you to the high places in God. Thank you, Jesus. Some of us want that high place. Some of us are not satisfied. Some of us just want the music of the organ and the piano. Mm -hmm. But some of us want the music to stop for a while. Let me dig a little deeper. Let me get a prayer through. Praise the Lord. Let me groan in the spirit. 
Hallelujah. Let me have a fast and a prayer that I can get through to God Almighty. Because I want to be able to say to the demons in hell, I got a made up mind. My mind is made up. My heart is fixed. And I'm not going to wish it, wash it through here, but I'm going to stand on the word of God. Too many folks are slipping and sliding. I don't want to be like that. I want to be on the right foundation and I want to position myself as a young woman, as a young man. As a middle age or a senior citizen, I want to position myself so I can discover the righteousness of God and discover the power of God. This book tells me some fascinating things about God. And I want to know for myself, I don't want Shadrach and Meshach to tell me that God is able. I want to know in my heart that God is able to move my mountain. I want to know for myself, and I don't want the missionary to tell it to me. I don't want my pastor to tell it to me. I want the Lord himself to come in my life and to show me that he is almighty. He has all power in heaven and earth in his hand. I want God to show me himself that he is the almighty God. I don't want to learn it in a classroom. I don't want to learn it just from literature. I want the revelation. Praise the name of God. If you give me the revelation, you can't take it from me. No, you can't. If you teach it to me, you can come back later on and say, I didn't teach it right. Hallelujah. But if the Lord give it to me, then you can make me doubt it because I know too much about it. You can't turn me around now because I've come too far. Yeah, yeah. I've come too far and I've come out of hard times. He put me in the fire and he scorched me on one side and he burned me on the other side. But he got that shit out of my life. Hallelujah. He put me in the fire furnace and he turned the heat up and said, bake it right until he's purified. I've been in the fire. I've been purified. And now I'm going to come forth like pure gold. And when I come forth, I'm going to come forth saying, Look where he brought me from. I'm going to come forth shouting, not because of the piano, not because of the organ, not because of a tambourine. But it's in my heart, it's in my heart, like a melody of love divine, it's in my heart, and you can't take it out, and when you put it in your heart, you can shout in your car, you can shout behind the typewriter, you can shout on the job, you don't have to get up and do the foot thing, you can shout on the inside, oh, I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I feel the power of God. I feel the joy 
glory of God. But for some reason or other, the devil want me to come off the foundation and take no position. I refuse to do it. I'm going to take my position. I'm going to stand on the foundation. And I'm not going to move. And if my wife don't go, I'm going by myself. If my children don't go, I'm going by myself. If the saints don't want to go, I'm going by myself. And if nobody want to go, I'd have to stand alone and wave my hand and say, he's been good to me. He set my soul free. He gave me the good old Holy Ghost. He gave me the word in my heart. He gave me the word in my soul. And nobody can separate me from the love of God. Nobody can take this joy. You didn't give it to me. You can't take it back. You didn't say that. You can't take it back. I'm glad. I'm saved according to the words. I'm glad. I got it like the Bible says. I'm glad. I got it like the word says. I'm going to stand on it. I say stand. Paul said, having done all, he said stand. He said stand. He said stand. 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 Until hell frees over. Stand until the devil don't like it. Stand until your soul is anchored in Jesus Christ. Stand until victory comes. Stand until the miracle comes. Stand until you got what you want. Stand. position. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And once you position yourself, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Once you position yourself, that demon is going to bring out his powerful stuff. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He bring out his tanks, his trucks, all of his machinery. 
all of his diabolicalness, he bring it out against you. But you're on a foundation now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're on a foundation now. Hallelujah. This ain't no tamarind salvation. <laughs> oh, Hatima Hasha. Hallelujah. This ain't no dancing salvation I got. It's standing. Standing salvation. Having done all. Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah! Having done all! Hallelujah! <laughs> Thank you, Jesus! How many times you said, I've, I've done all I know to do. I can't do no more. Oh, yes, you can do some more. You ain't never done all. You can do some more. You said, well, Pastor, I'm too weak to do anymore. Oh, yes, you you're not too weak to do anything more. You just feel like you're too weak to do anything more. Praise Lord. You can, you can still say thank you. <laughs> uh -huh. he, he done tried everything in his book and drained you so much until you feel so weak and you can't do nothing else. Yes, you can. You can say thank you. You say, but I can't get my mouth open. Say it inside. <laughs> say it inside. <laughs> Tell him, thank you. In your heart. Position yourself, baby. Hallelujah. <laughs> now Caleb positioned himself. He told all of those other spies who called him a liar. He said, Caleb is lying to you all. We was in the land just like Caleb was in the land. And we saw the giants. We saw those men that were born of giants. We saw them. Caleb said, I saw the same folks you saw. Praise the Lord. And Caleb say, I ain't no grasshopper either. <laughs> you say we look like grasshopper. I don't look like no grasshopper. You know what a grasshopper is? Somebody to step on. Mm-hmm. Caleb say, I ain't no grasshopper. You're grasshoppers. Praise the Lord. I'm stronger than the giants. <laughs> All of Satan's giants, you stronger than they are. Caleb said, let's get up from here and go on across this Jordan and possess our blessings. Glory, these are our blessings. But the other guys said, uh -uh, you better not cross that Jordan. If you do, they kill you like flies. Caleb said, uh-uh, won't kill me. I picked out my miracle while I was over there. I saw a mountain, and I claimed it, and hell is going to stop me. Hallelujah. Nothing is going to stop me. And that's the position God is looking for in every one of you. I'm not going to let nothing stop me. Nothing. Praise the Lord. No sweethearts, no lover boys, no lover girls, no nobody. And stop. Praise the Lord. The little thing that you let stop you shows you you haven't made up your mind yet. The little things that stop you, you haven't made up your mind yet. The big thing didn't come at you yet. Those are the little things. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Those are little things. Do you know what little things are? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Little things, baby. Thank you, Jesus. See, all the stuff that you had when you were in sin are little things. All that stuff is little, little, little stuff. 
That ain't big stuff. That's little stuff. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It looked big to you because you haven't positioned yourself yet. Oh, that's little stuff. Thank you, Jesus. Imagine a girl being a, a big thing to you. Imagine a boy being a big thing. That's a little thing. Praise the Lord. That's a little thing. Thank you, Jesus. Now, what's a big thing when it comes to the flesh? What's a big thing? Want to know? I'm going to tell you anyhow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Having a, having a sweetheart, somebody you love, want to, be, want to marry them, that ain't nothing big. That's a little thing. Praise the Lord. When it comes to the big things in the flesh, praise, as the young man said to me, uh, he said, Pastor, he said, you said that the Lord told you to clean up the church. And I know I need some cleaning up. And I said to him, what is your problem? He says, I'm gay. I said, yeah, you got a problem. That's a big thing. That gay demon ain't no little thing. That gay demon is the biggest thing in church. There is no demon in church more powerful than the gay demon. That's a biggie. The demon of fornication, the demon of adultery, small demons. The demon of homosexuality is a whopper. And what makes him so big is that once he come on you, he interwoven himself in your mental and physical being in a way that a fornicating demon interwoven himself in a normal person. A fornicating demon interwoves himself in the physical, mental fibers of the individual. And then they reach that point where they just got to do it. But that's, that's, that's not abnormal. That's normal because it's between a man and a woman. It's just dirty. But the, the homosexual demon interwoves himself in the mental and physical fibers of the individual with satanic help. Are you listening to me? It's not just a flesh demon. Homosexuality is not just a flesh demon. He's a satanic demon that works through the flesh and gets a hope to the individual's mentality and twists his spirit, take his mentality, his humanity away from him. Snatches it right away from him. And this man starts thinking like a woman. He loses all control. Loses all control. Start thinking like a woman. Once this happened, and he start going to bed with a man, committing sexual acts with a man, The demonic force get a hold to him. Infests itself in the full character of the person. And the human desires and practices of life that he hates the look of a woman. Anytime a man can hate the looks of a woman, something wrong with the man. You can't look at a woman and hate her unless there's something wrong inside of you. You look at a woman, you smile. Even if you don't feel good, you smile. <laughs> because she's the prettiest thing on planet Earth. So, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, 
get mad and look at a woman. And say, oh my God, isn't she ugly? How in the name of God can a man want somebody like that? And then this man turns to another man. Praise the Lord. Start pinching him. <laughs> Called him on the telephone. <laughs> Sweet talking him. I'm telling you how the demon operates. I heard a woman say to me, she said, Pastor, this woman says to me, this wife said to me, said, my husband, instead of coming to bed with me, he would sit up in the living room and talk until three and four o'clock in the morning with another man. And leave me sit, laying in my bed. And said, then when he come to bed, and I try to make love to him, try to hug him, a baby, and say, he said, leave me alone. <laughs> Don't touch me. See, he become vile every time that other man come in this house. Turn against me. She said, I can tell every time he talked to him on the telephone. When he get off the telephone, he hates me. See the demon? Demon. That's the demon in a homosexual. He hates the woman. Oh, yeah. And then he got the audacity to marry a woman just for cover. Marry a woman for cover and give her two and three children. And then hate her. I know a woman has three children. And she said, my husband have never kissed me. Got three children for him. Praise God. Whenever he wants a relationship, there is no man and woman making love warming up to each other. It's cold. I'm supposed to get ready to make love all by myself. This is the demon of homosexuality. And you want him to stay in church? No, he got to go. Got to go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can't stay here. Hallelujah. He's hateful. Demonic. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. And those you brothers who are real men, you got something to praise God for. You need to praise him. I mean praise him, brother. And, and praise him. Lest the Lord let that spirit get a hold to you. There it is. Because the homosexual demon start walking around, he just like any other demon. He'll try to cover whoever he can. One of the most dangerous things that you can have in church is two brothers who can't get along without each other. <laughs>